Reading with your kids. Hola, nihao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, morimu liwanji, namaste, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and so honored that you're joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show in the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Podcast Attic, Himalaya, Ghana, wherever you get your podcasts. Our guest today is Armando Rodriguez. He is here to celebrate anything's possible. What do you want to be when you grow up? I'm really excited to speak to Armando. What do you want to be when you grow up? That's a question my beautiful wife asks me all the time. Hopefully I can come up with an answer at some point. Hey, but before we invite Armando into the studio, we really do hope that you will subscribe to the podcast because we have so many amazing guests coming up in the next couple of weeks. Our friend Rajani LaRocca is coming back to the podcast. Rajani is such a wonderful, award-winning author. She is going to be here to celebrate her new book, Carrie Gallagher. Cyber expert Carrie Gallagher is going to be talking to us about how we can help our kids be safe when they're online and, and also how we can help them be conscious of what they're doing with technology. And in April, the one and only Rafi is going to be with us here on the podcast. You don't want to miss it. And hey, listen, you really don't want your friends to miss these great guests either. So please subscribe to the show on whatever your favorite podcasting platform is. Or you can go to readingwithyourkids.com and subscribe right there to our direct feed. And, and please tell two or three or five friends or families because they're not going to want to miss these guests either. Join us right now from Long Island in New York. We are really excited to speak to our guest tonight. He is the author of Anything's Possible. What do you want to be when you grow up? Please welcome to the show author and educator, Amando Rodriguez. Hey, Amando, how are you? I am doing fantastic, Jed. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you on. Armando was sharing with me that he has been uh, teaching middle grade kids for 27 years. I have to give you a round of applause for that. That is a lot of work, and we really thank you for your service because you are giving our kids uh, a lot of service. You're making a difference in a lot of kids' lives. Thank you. I appreciate that. And although it's been 27 years, I'm still having a blast and I enjoy what I do. That's wonderful. That is really wonderful and really important. Anything's possible. What do you want to be when you grow up? Tell us about the book, please. Well, uh, it, it ties into my career. Uh, um, I've been doing this for 27 years and um I've always tried to be very positive with my students and try to convince them about what's out there, um, that dreams that they may have are, are, are possible. And um, I always share a little bit of my story because of the population I work with. I'm a bilingual teacher. So um, a lot of these kids are coming from uh, Central America and where I'm from in Brentwood, New York. Um, and a lot of them, you know, they, they, they're living poverty. They, they, they're living day to day. They're, they are children in need. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, I relate to that, which is one of the main reasons why I am myself a bilingual teacher. i uh, growing up in, um, in Bushwick, New York. Um, I, I know what that's like. I know what it's like to bounce around apartment to apartment. Um, I know what it's like to, not know anyone in your family to graduate from high school. I'm actually the first to do so. I'm very proud of that. I'm first to go to college, finish. And um, uh, I, I knew uh, from a long time ago that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, but I'm going to be honest with my fans. Um, I actually wanted to be an astronaut <laughs> since I was a little kid. 
but when you grow up the way you do, you, 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 you do talk yourself out of certain things. And I didn't think I was smart enough. Um, ironically, I graduated as a salutatorian of my high school and I still doubted myself because of how I grew up. So, uh, the, the, the message in my book comes across to my kids as, Hey, listen, no, uh, you know, you can do what you, you know, put your mind to, you know, it's not going to be easy. Life is not easy, but, um, I, I challenge the kids mm. on how they think. Yeah. Uh, who you want to listen to. Yeah, I think that's so very, very important. We we talk a lot, a lot of people, when they get this idea of Long Island and they think of the Hamptons and all the luxury and the tremendous wealth, and they don't realize that between Manhattan and the Hamptons at the far end of the island, there's a large pockets of, of poverty, of extreme poverty in, in many cases. And... I'm imagining that a lot of those kids, especially you said that a lot of those kids come from Central America. Uh, for a lot of those kids, they're worried about if they're going to be able to stay in this country. Forget about growing up to be an astronaut. It's just like, am am I going to be here long enough to graduate sixth grade? Right. Yeah. What was it? That made a difference in your life because you said you were the first person in your family to graduate from high school. Um, sure that that uh, you were the first person and a lot of the families that, that you grew up with to graduate high school and then go on to, um, you know, higher education. What made a difference in your life that you were able to accomplish that? Um, I, w- I would start off by saying that ever since I was um able to, I was always trying to find how to make a dollar. And I had a local video game store. Um, I loved the place. It was called Richie's Candy Store. And it was my escape where with two quarters, I can spend hours playing video games. Not so much video games today. (laughs) Um, But I would run errands for him and he would give me a dollar. And um that that escape was what allowed me to to have hope because um while most of the friends that I have are running around doing other things mm-hmm. i I just knew I had to stay out of trouble um i I think a lot of it was just me being aware of what I wanted at an early age, and i I didn't want to live in an apartment where the lights are off for a few weeks because the electricity bill wasn't paid um, or having the stove on to stay warm uh, uh, in those cold winter days. So early on, I, I had that drive of, I know that I have to do the opposite of what's happening around me. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, um, my middle school experience is uh, what boosted um uh, my 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 ambition, my drive, my my education. Um, it was um, the school was called IS three eighty three, a school for the gifted and talented, which is um, a, a rarity in the area because uh, you just have public schools around, and this is one school where you actually had to apply to go and mm-hmm. and get in. And I believe the education I got there. Um, and a couple of pushes from teachers. I was not an easy student. I hated reading as a kid because that's not something you would not, it wasn't a norm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the teachers in there that challenged me, um, made a big difference. I, I love the title of your book. Anything's possible. What do you want to be when you grow up? Amanda, I've, I've, I've shared on the podcast in the past, uh, I just happened when, while I was touring, uh, I, it was either on a podcast or an article that I read that, that told me that kids who have a dream, kids who, when you ask them, what do you want to be when they grow up, say, well, I want to be a firefighter or an astronaut or a teacher or a nurse or a doctor, that those kids are happier. They do better in school. They're healthier. And I thought, um, first, my first thought was, well, 
everybody has a dream. But then I thought I would test it, and so I did a very unscientific experiment for the next week or two. Every time I was in front of an audience of four or 500 kids, I would ask them, how many kids, just raise your hand if you have a dream. If you know when you grew up you want to be X, Y, or Z. And I was shocked to see that never there were never more than 60% of the kids who raised their hands. I was amazed at how many kids didn't seem to have a dream. And that that horrified me. Is that something that you find a, as a teacher, that there are a lot of kids who aren't thinking like that, that they don't have a dream? Absolutely. And uh, I, I think the percentage is uh, about right, um, where not many kids are even thinking about next week or the month after, let alone their future. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, as a classroom teacher, that's one of the challenges I have with my own students. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to, you know, plant seeds of, hey, look, whatever it is you want to do, you can do it. Um, kids, they, you know, a, a lot of them don't. They don't have that mindset. Mm. And again, the main reason for the book is to try to bring awareness early. Um, I, I think this book sits well with the teacher reading to their students and talk about goal setting, um, you know, and start thinking about your future. Yeah. A parent sitting down and reading the book with their child and, and, and start creating that message. Yeah. I, I think that that's really important uh, is that, that whole interaction with parent and child. I think that's a great place to start. And when, when your kids are sitting on your lap, when your kids are sitting on the lap of the most important person in their life, you, your parent, the parent, the people that they look up to, and you're asking the kids, not only you're asking them what do they think about the story and letting them know their opinion matters when you think, when you ask them, hey, what do you think is going to happen next? But when you say to them, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you think you want to be? Even if it changes day to day or week to week, just – Putting that in there, planting that seed, I'm asking you what you want to be because I know that you can be anything you want to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, go ahead. So so how is the book set up? Is this a, a narrative or do we meet different kids? Uh, no, uh, it's, it's almost uh, – it's like a how-to mm-hmm. where the chapters are set up with – um, I'll go over the chapters real quick. Chapter sure. one, for example, is titled Getting a Dream. And in that chapter, very small chapters because it's a children's book. It's a one page chapter type of thing. Getting a Dream, that, that chapter is about start thinking about things you like. Do you have some hobbies that you might want to look into? Um, so just planting ideas of how to get a dream. Mm-hmm. If you have a dream, great. But if you don't, start thinking about the things that you have interest in. So chapter two is making your decision where, all right, this is what I want to do. Um, and there's some advice in that chapter. There's two extremes sometimes where a parent pushes their agenda on their child. Mm-hmm. And, and um, I, it, it's important for the child to know that it's their decision about what it is that that they want. And yes, you can go ask your parents for advice or teachers, people that are in that field that you think you might have interest in. Chapter three is titled, If You Can See It, You Can Be It. Uh, I'm a big believer in visualizing. Mm -hmm. Um, I I give advice about posting, you know, pictures on your wall about the thing that that it is you want. Um, My daughter, she's uh, a, a, a hyper performing gymnast right now with goals of making the Olympics. She has pictures of Paris all over her room. I don't know if she's going to make it, but the work ethic is there. The dream is there and she's pushing for it. And so we support that. So if you can see it, you can be it. Chapter four, one of my favorite chapters is believe that you can have your dream. And um, it's, it has my favorite illustration 
where a young girl is dreaming of becoming a teacher, uh, a judge, or an, or uh, or president of the United States. Um, and it's about who who you're listening to. Um, there's a lot of people that want to give advice, and sometimes people give advice thinking it's good advice. For example, um, hey, you want to be a doctor? Oh, you'll never be a doctor. That takes too long. It's too hard. Do this instead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, that's how my chapters are set up. Chapter five is titled Motivating Yourself. And um, I try to push kids to read biographies. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of power in biographies where you're reading about real people and their struggles. And now look at what they've accomplished. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's something that I do in my classroom as well. I do a lot of reading of biographies. That's excellent. So, yep. yeah. it's, it's like a, a, a how-to. Uh, a, a planning guide for for how you can accomplish your dream. You know that makes a lot of sense because for for a lot of kids, you know, uh, and especially as you mentioned, the kids that that you're serving, who maybe do not have anybody in their family who's graduated from high school and certainly have not gone on to to college, and um, so they don't have any in anybody in their family they can look up to who has made their dreams come true. Uh, such a great idea to, to give them those tools, those, those, those how to steps. And I think it's a great that it's presented in a, in a storybook form so that parents can sit down and, and help their kids make those, you know, just, just take those steps along the way. Exactly. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, it's not a one time read the book kind of deal. If you know, you could always go back. Sometimes there's that one chapter that you need to read over again. Remind yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I do it with my daughter all the time. I was like, all right, let's go to this chapter motivating yourself. You know, like who are the people who are listening to? Yeah. Uh, I encourage like a collection of songs that are motivating. In my classroom, I have a playlist of just motivational songs that the kids listen to all day. Um, not all day, but um, during quiet writing time, especially, I'll put it on. They're listening to um, lyrics of really powerful songs mm -hmm. um, that remind them, again, yeah. to, to dream big. Yeah. You know, you bring up a really good point. Um as parents, especially with our younger kids, we're very aware. We're curating what books are coming into the house. Occasionally, we'll, we'll go to the bookstore and we'll say, what book do you want? And the kids will pick it out. But I think most of the time, we're the ones we're going through the catalogs or we're in the bookstore ourselves or we tell our friends or the grandparents what books we'd like to have in our family library. But then when the kids get older, especially when they get in the middle school and they're starting to listen to music, they're kind of just putting on what is ever popular. And that's fine, but that's it, right. it doesn't mean that we can't introduce our kids to music that has meaning. Uh, we had Bob Marley's daughter, Sadella, on the show not too long ago, and that oh, was wow. what she said about her dad's music. Her dad's music had meaning and purpose. And there's lots of music out there. And if your kids aren't listening to it at the moment, that's okay. You can introduce it to them. Right. Yeah. And again, uh, it's, it's, I've been doing this for years. And what I uh, like to do, which is pretty cool, at the end of the school year, uh, where things are a little bit more relaxed and you're done with, you know, preparing kids for finals and exams, um, I'll actually download the lyrics to um, a couple of the songs and we'll read it as a poem and I'll read it purposely as a poem. I won't try to sing it mm -hmm. and we'll talk about what, you know, what does this line mean? Or, oh, look at this metaphor. What, what is it? Sound? Yeah. And then I'll have them close their eyes and then I'll play the song and just have them listen to it and, you know, take in the words. Yeah. 
and then they open their eyes and we talk about it. Um, there's been times where um, kids will wake up with tears in their eyes because they were really listening to the words and thinking about what it is that they want. Yeah. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Armando, I do this oftentimes when I have an educator on the show. This is my magic wand. It looks like a big pen, but it's a magic wand. I do magic over the country. If I were to hand you this magic wand, and you're one of the few educators who are coming on and saying, I love teaching. I've been doing it for 27 years. I still love it. It's still wonderful. We're doing great things. But education isn't perfect. So if I hand you this magic wand and I said to you, Armando, what would you do with this magic wand to make education better? What would you do? Wow, that's a tough one. Um, there's so, uh, as much as I love my job, there are so many challenges in the classroom. Um, if I had a magic wand, I would make, uh, I, I think this would probably affect many different aspects of teaching, I would say no more than 10 students per teacher. Magic wand. Boom. All right. I, I know that would make a huge difference in kids' lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a challenge um, to teach a curriculum to try to make sure all the students get the lessons. They don't all get it. Mm -hmm. It's very painful to move on. Uh, many teachers might actually have um, that be an issue where they know their students didn't get it and they stay in that topic for too long and you don't cover a lot of what you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, just minimizing the ratio between teacher to student, would, you would reach out to more students. Academically, their scores would, should definitely go up. You're talking about minimizing discipline issues. Um, you're going to be more effective talking to your parents because you're only dealing with 10 instead of 27, um, more effective teacher conferences with parents, um, and just the paperwork that teachers have to do is, I, I don't I don't know many people that would understand that are not in the field. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, again, it would be for more effective teaching if I could yeah. wave that magic wand and do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I agree. Uh, I've shared on the podcast a lot. My wife I just retired from teaching 34 years. She was a special education teacher. So she had those small classes. And she would oftentimes have kids for a couple of years because she would, you know, do a first, second grade or th third, fourth grade. And it makes a difference. You do get to know the parents better. You do build up relationships Um uh, the behavior problems are fewer, and they're while they're not, they don't disappear. She was able to deal with them a lot better, a lot easier than a teacher who is trying to deal with behavior problem and also keep twenty seven kids safe. So, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. Armando, I know people are going to want to know where they can go to find out more about Anything's Possible. What do you want to be when you grow up and also find out more about you? Well, um, as of right now, my book is available on Amazon.com. Um, and I have a Twitter account. Um, my handle is at It's Possible slash Rod. And that's how people can contact me. Excellent. We've had a really fun time speaking to the author of Anything's Possible. What do you want to be when you grow up? And our guest has been the author, Armando Rodriguez. Hey, Armando, thank you so much for being with us. Jed, it was a pleasure. I had so much fun. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest would be Mary Lesham Pelly. 
She'll be here to celebrate Penny and the plain piece of paper. Talk about a celebration of imagination. You don't want to miss this episode. Miri is an exceptional guest. Speaking of guests, if you are the author of a fantastic children's book, you may be wondering, how do I get to be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast? It's easy. Go to readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page and scroll on down to be a guest. It really is easy. It's a lot of fun. And it's a great way for you to tell thousands and thousands of people about your fantastic children's book. Check it out today, readingwithyourkids.com. Oh, and that's also the place where you can go to sign up for our free newsletter. We are revamping it. It's going to be relaunching in April. It's going to be amazing. Hey, speaking of amazing, we want to thank the amazing people who made today's show so wonderful. Let's start with our amazing guest, Armando Rodriguez. Please be sure to check out Anything's Possible. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Skylar Strauss. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of The Reading With Your Kids Podcast.